journalist Michael Schellenberger recently revealed to News Nation that a whistleblower tied to def- uh, the Defense Department revealed to him the existence of a Pentagon program that collects and quarantines information on UFO sightings and encounters. Schellenberger is one of the journalists, along with Matt Taibbi and Barry Weiss, who worked with Elon Musk to release the Twitter files. He told News Nation that he met with the whistleblower and verified their credentials and also independently confirmed the existence of the program with unrelated sources. According to Schellenberger, the whistleblower discovered the program by accident after stumbling upon a database containing UFO information. In one encounter reportedly detailed by the whistleblower, a group of orbs surrounded an F-22 and forced it out of designated uh, out of its designated patrol area. In another incident, the crew on an aircraft carrier reported seeing an orange-red sphere descend from a high altitude and described feeling uneasy and as if they had snapped out of a trance following the encounter. He said the program is called Immaculate Constellation. Oh, this that's co- a cool name. I know. And it like, like, all right, that actually, that tracks a little bit. Cause there's, I mean, for people who don't know this, there's random name generators. Sometimes they suck and sometimes they're cool. Cause Immaculate Constellation is pretty badass. This comes on the heels of former Air Force intelligence officer, David Grush and former Pentagon employee, Louis Elizondo, claiming that similar programs exist. Do you think there is validity to these claims or are they actually just meant to conceal advanced military aviation technology. I'm seeing this one in in the headlines, not often, but often enough. You know, government program exists, suppressing UFO information. Is it government technology? Is it, is it the government trying to control information? Well, what do you think's going on with all this stuff, Mike? I think it's both. I mean, I, I, I believe the government um, obviously has programs that are special access programs that do some shady stuff. I mean, the government's known f- to do that. I've I've known SAP programs that I'm like, what? Like, why are we doing that? That's crazy. Um, when I see and hear about UFOs, the first thing that comes to mind is I think it's likely foreign or domestic aircraft testing or, or technologies testing. Um, for, for somebody who's been actually to Area 51, um, and understands kind of like, I used to be fascinated by UFOs and I've studied them. It's not, it's not beyond the U S government to one cover something like that up, but also be involved in testing with DARPA and all these different organizations, these technologies. And, and so it could be a combination of both. I mean, if they're seeing unidentified flying objects, it doesn't have to be from space. It could literally be from China. Yeah. It could be from more advanced foreign adversaries, uh, technologies, and uh, you know surveillance. And so I, I am not surprised by this at all. I've I've worked with DARPA, uh, with Task Force, and have seen a little bit behind the curtain. Uh, I've worked with the NRO, which is the scariest organization I've ever worked with. <laughs> I mean, that stuff will like blow your mind. The National Reconnaissance Organization. It's like what we have the ability to do that. Yep. And that's 10 years ago. I can't even imagine what they're capable of doing today. So yeah, not surprising. And I I believe all of it. Yeah. Disclaimer. I don't know if uh, UFOs exist because I'm not an expert on this, but I want them to because I think it would be cool if we were not alone in the universe. And again, I'm not a mathematician, but from my understanding of the scope and scale of, of the universe, I feel like it's improbable that we are alone. And I actually would not be I mean, I guess I would be trepidatious a little bit if we were to encounter an alien species. But at the same time, I don't, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a Hollywood movie where they're always here to like enslave us or take over our world or, you know, mine for whatever rare earth minimal that we didn't know was inside of our bones. So they're going to turn us into a necklace. But I think it would be cool to know that we are not alone. I actually think it might ground people a little bit more. And maybe they would take a little bit of a less grandiose view of their station in life and its station in the world. But having said that, the only the only thing that I keep seeing with these whistleblowers, they come forward and they talk about the programs that they have witnessed. And I and I and I believe them that they believe what they have seen, but I just don't understand why not a single one of them 
has a single piece or shred of evidence. And that's what keeps me on the fence. Like, just show me your homework. Can you show me a single piece of something somewhere that we can agree is not of, you know, earthly origin? And that's where my hang up is on this a little bit. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's the counter argument to that would be potentially compartmentalization. I, I've known special access programs where individuals on my own team under, you know, certain circumstances were part of a special access program and an operation and weren't allowed to communicate that to other members of the team. Uh, I also know special access programs where only two or three people total knew about what was going on. Um, I've also seen declassified special access programs where I'm like, I can't believe we were doing that, or I can't believe we did that. And so I imagine those programs are not on an open forum. It's not, it's not going to be something that's going to be on the giant, you know, t task force common to all or, uh, or accessible to all. And so those whistleblowers, they see just like the, the, the top level of it. But I imagine deep down in DARPA in the basement, um, there's nerds doing some crazy stuff. Um, I did do a program with DARPA, which this is open source now. It wasn't at the time of using an Israeli tactic, which is, I think I've had this conversation with you, using uh, UAVs that were disguised as birds, uh, as, <laughs> as, as vultures. And what's crazy is the Israelis, they invented this TTP. So they were flying vultures um, that were U drones, that were UAVs, that looked like it, and task force was interested. And I thought it was a bunch of crap. And I was like, dude, this, are you kidding me? It's a, it looks like a bird. Until we went out to test these things, and I talked to the operator next to me, and this is in rural North Carolina, I think at Aberdeen Training uh, Grounds. And I'm like, hey, man, I, I've lost control. I can't manually control it anymore. And it gets it. And he says, like, it's fine. It's, I'm, I'm controlling it right now. And I'm like, dude, you're not controlling it. Like, I, like, it's going the opposite direction. And I had literally started tracking a buzzard, a, a bird. So there were actual vultures that were flying with this drone that looked like a vulture. Yeah. And I lost track of it and actually looked at a real vulture and thought I was controlling it. And it flew away. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm now convinced because... I just literally started controlling a live animal and and fooled myself. So all of these things exist in in silos. Um, I hope Trump gets in because he said if he gets in, he's going to do a couple things, including releasing the JFK files and potentially stuff on UFOs, which would be rad. That's that's a reason to vote for him in the first place. Ah. Uh I don't know if I can support that comment. It's an interesting uh, commentary that he might have made. I'm not so necessarily sure he'll do the things that he said that he would. The JFK files would be an interesting. We put that down for an episode in the future. Do you hear what he said about the JFK files? No. He said, if you saw what I saw, you wouldn't release them either. And then there was an uproar like, what? Yeah. What does that mean? And then he said uh, this last year, if he gets back in, he's going to release them, which... I believe is the CIA killing uh, JFK because they thought he was a spy, or at least he was uh, involved in some kind of spying. I watched a documentary one time called National Treasure 2 with Nicolas Cage, <laughs> and he got into the Library of Congress because that's where the president's book is. And in that book apparently is where these details can come out. And maybe in there is the UFO stuff. Dude, I want to believe. I do want to believe. Because like I said, at a baseline level, I think it would be cool. You know, the special access program thing is very real. But so are people who leave those programs. And for the betterment, maybe in the rearview mirror, they bring their homework. And I'll use Snowden as an example of this. And I'm not advocating that people do this. But Snowden, Snowden blew the whistle on some shit that was deeply compartmentalized, Right. But he brought the homework as well. He said, this is not only what I've seen, here it is. You know what I mean? So it's possible. Um, I also can see it being high-level military tech. You know, a good example of that would be the F-117 stealth bomber. That thing was yeah. operating in secret for years before it was exposed. And nobody could think of uh, an aircraft like that. I believe it had the radar cross-section of a bumblebee. Uh, mathematically, that's what it was. And nobody thought that was possible. I mean, that was, fuck, 20 years ago. So I don't know. It's another thing I struggle with 
is an, an alien race that has the technology to travel through potentially space and time and arrive at, at the U.S. and they always are in the world, but then they they seem to crash a lot when they get here. You know, they can make it here, but they can't seem to figure out how to fly around here without crashing. That is odd. <laughs> that that is something that's weird. It's like it's like in the fifties too. Everything that was stereotypical to the UFO phenomenon was very vintage. Like it was like yeah. almost like it was in the fifties. And so I just think it, it is odd that you know the the most advanced technology in the universe would just frap into the ground near Area Fifty One. What do you think? Let's say for what? It, okay, well, let's hypothesize. Let's say Trump gets elected. So in Feb, he gets in and he releases everything about UFOs. And let's say that all of these whistleblowers were telling the truth, that there is this robust cataloging and network of not only you know alien spacecraft, but also creatures, right? Beings, whatever it, whatever it may be. What impact do you actually think that that would have? I mean, I think it would shock people, but do you think it would change people's lives in any way, meaningfully? No, I just think, you know, it would it would literally be a blurb on X for 12 hours, and then people will be moving on to some other drama going on in the world. I, I, I don't think it would have a profound impact at all. And my, my theory is likely it's it's true more now than ever before because we could see it. And, you know, because we have the FLIR technology, we have the infrared uh, capabilities of seeing in different spectrums and maybe it's something that's existed the entire time it's just there in plain sight we just don't have the technology um, as basic humans to be able to see it you get it more advanced in, in your abilities to see different spectrums of light I mean thermal technology is you know using fusion goggles with infrared and thermal technology integrated to see heat is insane to me, and that's yeah. the baseline for every operator and special operations now. So, you know, I, I think we're going to be surprised, and I, 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 I want to believe, and uh, it's not too far fetched that it potentially is going to be true. I mean, I, I believe it's going to be true. I believe I have faith. If you were offered a ride on an alien spacecraft, would you take it? Nope. What? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I know what you would do. You would you would jump off of one. Yeah, I would pilot it first and then try to turn it into a jump paddler. Man, I don't know. I think I'd have to take it. I want to believe. I don't want to be alone. It, uh, but what the hell do I know? I don't know a goddamn thing. <laughs> Order now. The two women who were killed and found dismembered in Juarez on Sunday were from El Paso. On the southern border, there is a legal concept known as reasonable fear, a lifeline for those fleeing violence. A Texas couple was found tortured and murdered. Police say so far this month, 11 women have been killed in Juarez. And then their bodies or body parts offered up to Santa Muerte as an offering to represent death. In this special Borderland docuseries, I take a deep dive onto true crime stories. Join me as we uncover the truth about the fear behind the crisis. This was a group of powerful people. Never been seen before in Mexico. Evidence of ritualistic elements. We ended up rescuing almost 200 kids. The discovery of multiple women in mass graves. They're almost in every state. When you put it together, you have an economic extortion map. But even more violent. 